The Intel Q6600 quad-core processor can be overclocked with tape. In benchmarks and games, I saw a performance boost of around 25%. Here we have Cinebench R15. On the left side, the Q6600 with stock settings, we're getting a score of 235. And on the right side, I applied a tiny bit of tape onto the processor. And look at that, it runs faster. We're getting a score of 294. And here we have Dirt 3 on the left side, the Q6600 with stock settings, we're getting around 80 FPS, but applying a little bit of tape and we're getting around 100 FPS, a nice performance boost. So out of the box, the Q6600 runs at 2.4 GHz with a frontside bus of 1066 MHz. And by putting a tiny bit of tape on a specific pin on the CPU, I will put a photo onto the screen. The front side bus raises to 1,333. We still have a 9x multiplier and the CPU runs now at 3 gigahertz. The Q6600 is for LGA775 and I have a few main boards from Gigabyte, ASRock and Asus with either DDR2 or DDR3. However, these main boards already support overclocking through the BIOS. What is really cool, however, is that overclocking with the tape works on OEM main boards that are locked and do not support any overclocking through the BIOS. In my box of motherboards, I found this one, but I wasn't sure about the manufacturer and model. G45M03, so I entered that into Google and it's telling me this is from a Dell Vostro. I found a user manual, looked at a few pictures and this seems to be from a Dell Vostro 220. The manual also tells me that this motherboard supports the higher FSB frequency which we need. Unfortunately it only supports DDR2 memory and we only have two slots. So we're looking at a maximum RAM capacity of only 4 GB. We're using a DDR2 dual channel memory kit from Corsair running at 800 MHz and with 555-18 timings. I installed the Q6600, put the motherboard on my test bench and it fired up straight away. And in the BIOS we can see a service tag. So I googled that. It took me to the uh, Australian support page and here we can download things like drivers, user manuals and of course the BIOS. The main board already had the latest BIOS but if it has a BIOS we will flash it. So we are flashing the latest BIOS once again. We are installing the latest version of Windows 10 with all the updates. I'm using a Western Digital Blue 500GB SSD. The SATA connector on the motherboard is in a difficult location. I had to use an angled SATA cable and yeah, not pretty but it got the job done. We're using a Radeon RX 470 with 4GB of video memory. For cooling we're using an Intel boxed cooler with copper core and a graphite thermal pad. And in terms of temperatures, once overclocked, they do go a little bit higher, around 80 degrees, but not too much to worry about. And now let's have a look at some benchmarks, comparing the stock Q6600 against the overclock with tape. In CPU set, the multi-score thread increases from 822 to 1055, and the single score result from 213 to 266. Cinebench R15, 235 increases to 294. In R20 we see a boost from 428 to 635. And in Cinebench R23 we're going from 1235 to 1556. The overclock will consume more power. In Cinebench R15 the stock machine 137 watts and with the overclock 154. And another look at some games. We already compared Dirt 3. Let's have a look at Rise of the Tomb Raider 1080p with high details. And we can see on the stock Q6600 we're getting around 43 FPS in this scene. And with the overclock 53, so that's 10 additional FPS. Strange Brigade is a game that is very optimized. Here the overclock does very little on both machines. We're getting around 100 FPS because the bottleneck here is actually the graphics card. We're playing at 1080p with high details. So this is thanks to the Vulkan API. 
And of course, does it run Crisis with the overclock? It does a better job. We have the game running with high details and in most parts it is very playable. When you get to some of the more demanding areas, performance does go down, but it's not too bad. The Q6600 at 3 GHz does a good job running Crisis. So guys, this was the Q6600 overclocked with tape. In the recent video, you left me a lot of comments about checking out this mod and I was quite skeptical. I've never done it myself, but it turns out this is real. Now, apparently this works only on uh, certain CPUs and this, the Q6600 is one of them. So we saw that it works on OEM mainboards that do not have any overclocking options in the BIOS. Also, the way it overclocks, uh, you don't have to worry about the clock speed of the RAM. It keeps those multipliers all uh, compatible. And yeah, unfortunately, we only had four gigabytes of RAM, so we couldn't test uh, the latest and greatest games, but older games will work just fine. Also, the Q6600 does not have the latest CPU instructions, so a lot of modern games will not run. Still, despite all of these shortcomings, I was pretty impressed with the performance. We have to understand this is a CPU from 2007 and with only 4 gigabytes of RAM, it actually did a pretty solid job. Here we have Doom running on this machine, also with Vulkan, and yeah, it runs fairly well. Uh, the video card is important, of course, when we play games. At the moment, finding a budget graphics card is difficult. I was lucky I bought this video card back when prices were fairly decent. DDR2 memory shouldn't cost you too much. LGA 775 motherboards, also cheapest chips. You might get a OEM machine for free. Uh, not very appealing to enthusiasts. But yeah, with the Q6600, a little tape applied and you get some fairly decent performance. The temperatures were a little bit on the high side. So the Intel stock cooler, not that great. The graphite thermal pad, I continue using it and it does a really good job. Makes it less messy. I don't have to spend too much time cleaning. So yeah, guys, there you have it. The Q6600 overclocked with tape. Um, really interesting. I didn't believe it. And yeah, I had a lot of fun playing around with this project. Uh, and yeah, what a shame. These days overclocking is not as exciting as back in the day where it could unlock cores and all sorts of things. But yeah, it is what it is. So you guys let me know, have you overclocked your Q6600 back in the day using tape or did you just have a motherboard that supported overclocking through the BIOS? And yeah, what else do you wanna see in future videos? I read every comment, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I shall see you soon with another one.